Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, my name is Kelly. I am a speech pathologist. It's weird saying that I'm not, I'm a, wow, it's weird not saying I'm a clinical fellow SLP. Um, I'm a speech pathologist and I wasn't going to vlog today, but so I'm still in the training phase of my new job. If you're new here, I got a new job. I've been working in a new hospital. Um, and I guess it's been like, I'm on my two, two and a half week mark. Um, the position is both inpatient and outpatient position. And so this week we were focusing on outpatient training. I got a couple trainings last week and then this whole week, it's Tuesday, this whole week was gonna be outpatient training. But circumstances changed last night and my trainer is ill, not feeling well. And so welcome for, to my first day as an outpatient speech therapist. We're doing great over here. We're not stressed or we don't have any anxiety at all about today. It's going to go great. Um, you know, I have a new eval. I've got seven treats. Anyways, I figured I would bring you along as my first day as now patient speech therapist. Woohoo! I am, I'm only really working with adults. Let's just put that out there. So a lot of my caseload is like post stroke, post brain injury, anybody in the community who's having either dysphagia or ongoing cognitive or linguistic deficits, we're treating as outpatient to target their goals, to return to work, to return back to their baseline. So it's an exciting day. I feel really confident in my ability to provide therapy and evaluations. It's more like the paperwork behind it. That's what's causing me anxiety. But I also know I can reach out to my other speech therapists on the team who are over at the hospital, which is just across the street. If I run into any difficulty saving the stuff correctly or putting in the right billing codes. So I'm just trusting that when in doubt, use my resources and ask questions. If you guys watched last vlog, you saw that I got some new scrubs that I bought off of Poshmark because buying scrubs less expensive is always a win. So I'm wearing them today. Um, I've got this, you can't really even tell the difference, but instead of the one pocket scrub top, it's like this uppercut neck scrub top design thing. My cross necklace is Kendra Scott. And this is Garmin. Anyways, so this is the fit. These are like the Livingston pants. I thought I would really like them because they're different than the joggers. I always wear jogger pants. But honestly, if you're an inpatient SLP or inpatient anything, I don't know if I would really recommend these because the only pockets they have are in the butt and they don't have any additional pockets. So like, I can't put my straws, I can't put my notes, I can't put my work phone or my cell phone in these pockets. So for outpatient therapy, these pants are fine. They're going to do great. But for inpatient, I am i don't plan to wear these. Anyways, I need to get off to work. I'm going to take you along the day. We're going to keep updating on how this goes. I have an 8 a.m. eval, so let's hope they show. And let's get this Tuesday show on the road. I'm at work. I got here. Safe and sound. Oh, I'm going to head in. We got this whole day. I think I really have patients from like 8 a.m. to 3. So I need to head in. I need to at least start like kind of planning what I'm going to do and do a quick chart review on some of these patients because I'm, I've only seen one of them before for their initial eval last week. So walk in, put the food in the refrigerator, quick chart review, get a plan for the morning, and then I have a lunch break so I can get a plan for the afternoon of my lunch break, log in, and get my assessment material for this first eval. Let's go. Well, so much for getting to the office early because <laughs> there's no one here and I don't have keys to the office yet. So I'm, I'm out here waiting. In other words, I really, really, really want to get some snake plants for my apartment and look how great these look. We're out of here chilling. Well, friends, <laughs> it's 4.24, 4.25, and I'm headed home for the day. So we did it. We survived. I 
I don't really know what happened today. I, I had patients back to back from eight to 2.15, they left at three. And then luckily my three o'clock canceled. So luckily I did not have a case patient from three to 3.45. But I was like back to back except for a 30 minute lunch break all day long. And let me tell you, my brain is absolutely fried. But like, it was such a great day of therapy. I saw such a wide diverse of patients and I had an eval this morning that, oh no, the light is green. This literally always happens to me. Anyways, I like, I had an eval at 8 a.m. that I told you guys about. I did a, the NDAT dysarthria eval with them. And then I did the WAB with him. And then I also did a communication effective survey with him and IOP measurements. So that was just like testing, testing, testing. And then I had some voice patients. I was doing like this cool program that we have, um, I forget, Visi Pitch, maybe that's what it's called. I did some work with that with the patient. I had apraxia therapy. I had cognitive therapy with, you know, recall of memory and orientation. I had advanced cog therapy for returning to work. It was just an action-packed day, and my brain is absolutely fried eggs. I, not only like is outpatient therapy very different because you're spending 45 minutes to 90 minutes with the patient, it's so different when it comes to note-taking because it's such a data-driven like therapy approach where like inpatient, I feel like I, I write very like, quality notes like qual qualitative driven versus quantitative because it's like did the patient cough on a bedside exam or are they using their strategies and it's it's so less like in four or five opportunities and 80 percent accuracy so it's a completely different way to approach note writing um but i feel very confident in that my clinical skills are going to be challenged in that way um to continue focusing on this data-driven approach and actually tracking patients' progress. So um, I, I think this outpatient therapy life combined with inpatient therapy life is just gonna be like the perfect little mixture. All right, guys, so back from work, I took off my crusty scrums. And I had a snack and just got my mind back and running because, I mean, I think you could tell in the card that I was kind of out of it and just discombobulated and a little bit overwhelmed with everything that we did today as an outpatient SLP, but we did it. Um, I figured I'd give you a quick little apartment tour. That's a little bit better. Of uh, my apartment, um, it's not big, so this is gonna be nice and quick, but to give you guys a little lowdown of the space that I'm renting. So, so we have the front door, um, my TV, and then this is a look of the living room. It does have a ceiling light that's currently off. And yeah, so I got these two chairs. This is like not the most aesthetic area, but my bike setup, my Wahoo kicker, the couch, a nice big, closet over there and then you walk into this hallway where you've seen me at the mirror hi um and then into my bathroom nothing too crazy i've got my wetsuit drying from this past weekend um and then across from my bathroom is my bedroom so my bed my two nightstands another closet plenty of space, perfect for just one person. And then the kitchen's a little bit like outdated and yeah, your refrigerator, my trash can's behind me right now. And then my little setup for my kitchen. These are my crackers that I'm eating right now. You know, I love these non-crackers. Um, and then out here, I have a little balcony. 
cute little door. And I'm growing two plants right now. This one was at Jonathan's house and died. And then this is a new flower plant that I'm planting. So I need to water these, but two little plants. All right, well, that was just a quick little video, a recap of my day today, a little insight into an outpatient SLP, uh, adult outpatient SLP. I definitely think this is a unique opportunity, you know, to expand on teaching about our field of practice that adult outpatient therapy services does go across the lifespan. So patients who are having ongoing cognitive deficits, post-stroke, or even just with general aging and early onset dementia, that our services are super helpful for those patients who are dealing with disorientation or language impairments or confusion or, you know, who've lost some of their skills that they want to regain on, like problem solving and doing crossword puzzles. So definitely a unique opportunity to start getting the word about that out about that and just expansion on education of the speech pathology profession. So I hope you guys liked today. I'm going to keep educating on what an outpatient SLP therapist does, different techniques I do and go more in depth in those, but I just wanted to give a preliminary um, video on it. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for fault. <coughs> Goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much for following along and I'll catch you guys soon.